Now, from the studios of Into Tomorrow in Miami, this is ITTV. We met up with our next guest at the recent International Association of Chiefs of Police conference in San Diego that we visited, and we try to get to those conferences as often as possible. A lot of very cool tech, not only for police, but also military and security, and just in general, uh, very cool things to see. Well, he's with uh, a company that offers hardware, software, and professional services that provide value to customers across all kinds of industries and certainly even us as consumers. Director of Government for Panasonic Connect is Alex Nolman. Am I saying your last name right, Alex? Oh, it would help if I actually turned you on. Uh, so, <laughs> it's been one of those days, so I am pronouncing your name correctly. Yep, yes, sir. All right, thanks, Alex. Uh, tell me a little bit about Panasonic Connect. Um, how does that differ from the Panasonic that we've all known for many years? Yeah, absolutely. Thorough. Thanks, Dave, for having us on and giving us an opportunity to chat. Sure. Uh, so Panasonic Connect uh, was, was founded about a year and a half ago, um, and it's, it's a uh, consolidation of different Panasonic companies from around the world. Uh, Panasonic, you know, over a hundred year old corporation, um, thousands of product lines across many, many different industries and representing factories uh, all over the world. So uh, the Connect is really our business to business uh, portfolio, which includes, as we're talking about today, the rugged uh, mobility portfolio, but it also includes uh, digital signage, uh, broadcast production cameras, um, uh, some business products, some factory automation products, and a, a suite of software solutions. So globally, we took all those businesses and brought them together under one umbrella, wow. uh, which is Panasonic Connect. So we're we're still still a subsidiary of, of the Panasonic that everybody knows, uh, just with a little more focus and a little more flexibility uh, to be able to bring solutions to the clients. I love it. Uh, we ought to connect with you with uh, with one of those <laughs> with one of those broadcast video cameras that we can perhaps evaluate as well at there some we point. Go. There and, we go. And the reason I say that is because we use and have used a bunch of your products for many, many years, not only uh, as we travel the world at various trade shows, like where you and I last met up in San Diego recently, uh, but also because we use them in our studios and control room all the time. For example, we're constantly monitoring our stream, and when we're on remote broadcast, we're using this. Again, I'm, I'm showing folks this, so if you're just listening audio-wise, be sure to visit intotomorrow.com and see the product. But this is a tough book laptop, or tablet, if you will, rather, uh, that does quite the job for us. And especially on remote broadcast, you probably saw one of my staff holding it and making notes with you as we were chatting in the Panasonic booth in San Diego, uh, because we use it for booking guests on these broadcasts and confirming people and sending info. Uh, but that, but wait, don't order yet, because we also, <laughs> sorry, the old DJ in me pops up every so often, but we also use the Panasonic Toughbook laptop constantly to record every single show and again on remote broadcasts around the world because it is so tough, because we have the ability uh, to carry it around and, uh, and unfortunately let the airlines uh, abuse our equipment sometimes and that sort of thing. Uh, that's why Toughbook has been the way to go for us as broadcasters for all these years. So uh, I'm sure when we start talking about challenges, for example, that military, security, and especially law enforcement face these days, it's no wonder you guys were at the Chiefs of Police conference. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, the uh, the Toughbook brand was was founded around law enforcement. It was uh, you know 27, 28 years ago when this idea of putting a computer in a car first first started to formulate, you know, we had a, we were, Panasonic at the time was an OEM provider of computer technology. And, uh, you know, there was co requests coming in for a product that didn't exist, a, a hardened, <laughs> ruggedized laptop. And uh, so Panasonic, you know, brought that to the market as the tough book. And um, it, it's, uh, law enforcement has been our, our, uh, our core target market uh, since day one and, and continues to be the pride of the, the portfolio. 
And, and you may or may not know that I spent many years as a Miami-Dade police officer. Of course, back then we didn't have laptops in our horse and buggy, uh, but, but it has made an incredible difference. In fact, the department was just beginning to transition to that sort of thing when I left. And, uh, and now all the guys and gals that I know or used to work with say they couldn't do their job without the tough book in the car. And, and it makes perfect sense, uh, you know, because and no to some people, they're not watching movies or, uh, or, or something. But talk about the ability to do report writing, the ability to run a tag very quickly. I mean, all the things that one would expect where data makes a difference in law enforcement, you guys have got that covered. Yep. Yeah. And uh, we, we've definitely seen that transition where, you know, the computer was a, uh, a nice to have at first, you know, and then, you know, we saw a lot of pushback of, um, oh, been handwriting tickets my whole career. I'm not about to stop, but <laughs> yeah. like you said, now it's, it's become a critical tool. And, uh, you know, if, if the, if the computer goes down, you know, that, that, that officer, that deputy, and essentially that car comes out of service. Yeah, oh, and, yeah. uh, we really, you know, we, we started off with tough book, you know, being the, the ruggedness and being able to survive, but it's really turned into the reliability, uh, just like, you know, in your studio, you know, that device has to be running 24 seven. If, if that car's on patrol or fire truck, you know, in a station waiting on a dispatch call uh, and, and consumer technology, you know, even though it can be ruggedized, just isn't designed for that kind of, uh, you know, nonstop service. Uh, yeah. so that's really where we've kind of shifted the focus is to that reliability and longevity side. And I think it's terrific that you guys at Panasonic basically were faced with a problem that did exist, but no solution yet until you took on that challenge. You know, because, we, you know, a lot of departments uh, and fire departments, police departments, certainly military as well, were saying, if only we had something like a laptop that could handle the abuse we have to put it through. You know, right. we, we don't have the luxury of being in an office. Uh, you know, we're, we're we're mobile and we're moving and we're maybe we're in a tank or something. Yeah, number of things. And then you guys said, that doesn't exist, does it? Let's fix that. <laughs> and you did. Uh, so yeah. kudos to you. In fact, it's funny because the the uh, newer officers that I encounter uh, regularly uh, say, well, you wrote tickets by hand? <laughs> oh, yeah, thanks. You know, yes, and I'm 150, you know, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> but you're right. You know, if they can't do that with all the things that automatically fill in the blanks and stuff. Yeah, it took us a long time to write a ticket, um, you know, as opposed to now you can scan a license and you get it all in. You put in the right statute number and out it comes, you know, and it immediately goes to the clerk of the court's office and where it needs to be. And I mean, just all things are appropriate. How do you think, Alex, technology has really helped law enforcement professionals because there are many challenges? So how has tech addressed them, do you think? Yeah, th that's a great question. I, I think it started, you know, with the efficiency, right? Being able to write a ticket faster, more accuracy, you know, less time. But it's really turned into um, a, a conduit of communication. Um, and I, I think really safety is is the driving factor now, uh, basically bringing as much data, as much information real time to the front line, you know, giving that officer, that deputy access to everything they could ever need uh, right at their fingertips when they need it not having to, to wait for a, a, you know, look something up or capture something or research something, um, you know, just being able to, to roll up on a scene. And, and even if it's a Google search, this, what kind of snake am I looking at? Or, yeah. um, you know, we hear in law and fire rescue all the time before they cut a car, where are the battery cables, you know, where are the battery mm -hmm. packs, uh, being able to pull up those diagrams, you know, in the field and uh, look at them real time, being able to pull up, you know, uh, uh, maps of, of buildings and schools and so forth. So it's really, uh, you know, the technology is really given uh, a, a safety net, if you will, to the frontline workers that, you know, gives them access to what they need when they need it. And that's uh, uh, some great examples, and I'm glad you brought several of those up. And, and a lot of times it's even just GPS in order to get to the call properly. <laughs> you know, it might not be an area that you're that familiar with or, you know, you've got uh, as a deputy sheriff, perhaps in rural areas, you know, gee, I haven't been out there in years, you know, for any reason. And uh, where is it? <laughs> you know, And just to have, a, you know, a tough book lead you uh, to that, let alone some great examples 
about, you know, uh, what kind of snake is it and do I need, what are my <laughs> concerns or any number of things that can come up that they have the ability uh, to deal with. And of course, I talk a lot about the benefits of Tough Book, both with the, the tablet and the laptop that we carry everywhere. Uh, mm -hmm. But tell me about uh, the hardware and services that Tough Book provides, uh, because people do look at benefits. Of course, you have to. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's interesting, you know, as, as you and I have kind of taken a trip down memory lane here yeah. with ticketing, you know, yeah. when, uh, when, when the first generations of tough books came out, even to, you know, probably seven or eight, nine years ago, you know, there was a lot of things that were really unique about them. Nobody, uh, nobody knew what a touchscreen was. They were, they were just starting to come out on ATM machines. Good point. And, you know, here's, here's a computer that you can touch. Um, putting a backlight under the keyboard, you know, was a very unique feature back then. The embedded modem was was uh, really, you know, unheard of in the industry um, of having a cellular connection built into the device. Um, and then, you know, fun fact, not many people know, you know, Panasonic was actually the first company to put a CD drive into a computer. Wow. Um, you you know, don't anymore, though, do you? <laughs> it's, it's like who can Not find anymore. an optical drive anywhere no, anymore? No, that's that's uh, that's, yeah. that's one of uh, one of our unique features. That it, since it's it's our product in our factory, you know, we're still uh, we have a lot of military customers that want CD drives. We have a lot of utility accounts that still want serial ports. Wow, uh, you know, on their devices, so wow. we can we can accommodate all those things uh, when you own the factory. So, yeah. um, <laughs> but. So it, it's been interesting. The hardware is really, you know, nowadays, you know, a, a touchscreen and a backlit keyboard and an embedded modem are really standard on any laptop. Yeah. Um, so it's uh, it's it's really evolved and it's, it's been fun to see what was once a very niche, you know, uh, product features become mainstream. So we've like I said, we've really shifted our attention um, to, to putting in features and and items that are, are requested by users from a safety perspective, from a, a efficiency perspective. Um, a little detail you'll notice, all, all the tough books um, have a, a, a red F11 key that's got a little square around it. You know, I see you looking at yours right there. <laughs> yes. You probably noticed that too. Yeah, ex um, and sure enough, there it is, right? <laughs> yeah, so Windows doesn't really use F11, so we, we, we highlighted that as, uh, you know, use it for whatever you want. It can be to, to acknowledge a call, it can be to call for help, but we figured uh, if we make it red and we make it easy to find even when you can't see it, you know, it, uh, you know that that's a feature that you don't really need on a consumer grade laptop, but can be uh, make a big difference when you're in the car and not wanting to take your eyes off the road or, yeah. you know, watching a, a dangerous situation in front of you and need to reach down and call for and, and acknowledge something without actually looking at it. So ah, love it. little well, features like that um, yeah. on some of our tablets, we've started adding physical buttons. You know, we've learned uh, we've we've heard from our, our law enforcement customers over the years that, uh, you know, being being very tactile, they want buttons they, that they can reach down and touch. Um, so being able to, to add shortcut commands and buttons that they can reach down and physically push a button to, to launch application or, you know, capture something mm -hmm. uh, versus having to put a keyboard command or use a mouse. So little, little things like that go a long way and uh, really differentiate, you know, what a, a consumer product would be versus something that, you know, built for a specific job. Too bad you can't yet push a button and capture the criminal. But that's a whole other thing. You help in <laughs> capturing the criminal. Chris, I want this F11 button now, uh, which is red and very easily stands out, programmed to uh, help me in some manner. We'll, we'll figure yes. something out. Uh, yep. <laughs> one of the extra cool things, Alex, while I've got you and we're fast running out of time, yep. is the fact that you have multiple modules, or I'm not sure if that's what you call them anymore, yep. uh, where they can specifically deal with certain customers, whether it's law enforcement or otherwise, that has a particular need for something that maybe most of us don't. Yeah. Good. Uh, thanks for bringing that up. Uh, you know, again, feedback from our, our end users on the front line has kind of been the, the core of our company. And, you know, one of the things we kept hearing is, hey, technology changes. Yeah. We've invested a lot of a lot of money into these products. We, we put them in cars, you know, that have a lot of money invested in them. And we can't we can't afford to swap out, you know, technology when every time something new comes out. Yeah. Um, so what we did was all the tough book models have gone to a, an X-Pack design, a modular you know, options. So we take as many components as possible and, and make them interchangeable. So on most devices, there's three or four areas where you can add and remove products out in the field real time. Nice. Um, things like a fingerprint reader, a smart card reader, a barcode scanner, uh, a FLIR camera, um, and then the, your standard, you know, the optical CD drive, an extra hard drive, an extra battery. Uh, so really, 
you know, the, the IT department can buy one computer and maintain one image across the business or the, the agency, but then it can be easily customized for specific departments or specific missions. So a, a, a detective might want an extra hard drive or, um, you know, a frontline officer might need the fingerprint scanner or the barcode scanner to read driver's licenses. Yeah. So being able to swap those out and, uh, and upgrade. And then that gives us the flexibility when a new technology comes out, which um, there's just been some, some new biometric fingerprint readers that are starting to hit the market. So we're able to quickly develop an X-Pack and allow our customers to add that functionality to their existing devices uh, for a very minimal cost and with very disruption. Just, you know, click it out, click it in, and, you know, the, the officer's back out on the street where he belongs. One of the many things we love about Panasonic and the Tough Book line, uh, and you own the factory. So, yeah, you, you make it work. You make it fit. You make it, you know, possible. And what's great is people don't have to buy all those modules. You buy the Tough Book, and then you get what you need. And in the future, it really is future-proofing, because I'm not sure what else you can do that you're not already doing. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> oh, gotta love it. For more, you want to visit toughbook.com. And of course, we'll get you there when you visit us at intotomorrow.com. Alex Nolman is the director for government with Panasonic Connect. Alex, a delight to chat with. And uh, thank you for spending a few minutes with us. You've got some great products. Keep up the good work. And as I say, I don't know what you can do for the next version, uh, but whatever it is, I know you guys will come up with it. Thanks, Dave. Really, really appreciate the time. It's our pleasure. Again, toughbook.com for more. And of course, visit us at your leisure, hopefully often and regularly at intotomorrow.com. I'm Dave Graveline. Stay tuned. There's much more to come right here on Into Tomorrow and right here on the Advanced Media Network.